Good morning comrades, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to the Nürburgring and welcome to a video that I am very excited to make, namely tell you what makes Polestar 1 such a special car. It's a car that I had for a period, I believe almost three months, did lots of cool things, many, many laps, lots of unforgettable memories. There was one thing that I have not really done and to actually explain to you what makes it really special. People were asking in the comments, can you talk more about the drivetrain, the suspension components, etc., etc. And I said, yeah, we'll do it tomorrow. Yeah, we'll do it next week. And then it never came. But luckily today we have the perfect opportunity because we're joining, we're joined by, again, Joachim who can tell us every single thing about all these things because he was responsible for making sure that all these components work together as a symphony and that the car could perform the way it did, the way you saw it over the last, well, months uh, on my channel. This is a different car again. I want to say first thing before we go nerd you out about technical features of the car is one of the most prominent and the best features is its design. Of course, Swedish design, minimalism and also sexiness it is i mean i'm just gonna put it this way this car was getting more thumbs up and looks and photographs and videographs when this car was rolling through the nebuchadnezzar car park than any other gd2 rs gd3 rs because this is at the end of the day also actually more exclusive because of the numbers is produced and because it just looks so sexy and different i had the experience with the white polestar with a dark blue one and this when Joachim was coming over, he asked me like, which color do you want? I'm like, let's take a silver one. So, and I think silver might be actually my favorite one. So just a quick glimpse over the design features. And while we're talking about design, we briefly talked with Joachim about it already. Tell us about these shoulders. What makes them so special? The whole body here is made in carbon fiber. And due to that, we can make very sharp, sharp, edges mm -hmm. and that gives the stance yeah because if car. it would have been aluminum or uh, or steel, steel you need to have it more different around. radius here but yeah look at the line here it's so yeah, cool it is, it is it's really beautiful when you see this car also on the track it is amazing but now let's talk about the the drivetrain the, the the components what makes this car perform the way it does the way this car shouldn't actually perform because again traditionally speaking when you think about gt about associated with having comfort comfort and speed actually don't go often together as well then you have also the weight but yet again you've seen it this car can dance so before we go into the suspension components powertrain drivetrain this is something really weird Unique. Yes, this is, this is a hybrid car, first of all. Yes. So in a pure mode, you can drive 125 kilometer. Mm -hmm. So it works like an EV car in the city center. Mm -hmm. And the pace is quite good. Yes, because can, bear in mind, like usually hybrids are, you can have about between 25 to 50 kilometers something range. Something like that. And here you have 125, which yeah. I have tested multiple times. It is actually not just like marketing brochure, WLTP cycle or some crap. And it actually is above 100 kilometers, close to 125. And... You can drive up to 160 kilometers per hour, yeah. full electric. This full is electric. That is uh, also, again, very impressive. Um, okay, we have two electric, independent electric motors in the back. Yes. Which are not connected with each other, which allows you to have torque vectoring. Exactly. Which That gives the, the car a unique feeling at Nürburgring, for mm -hmm. example. And torque vectoring for the, the beginners, for people who don't know, this means you can steer each motor independently, left and right, and thereby if you need to have more turn in, more power goes to the right motor, and then you can have better turn into the left corner. That's basically a very, yeah, a quick introduction into the world of torque vectoring. So that's what we have on the rear. How many horsepower does it produce on the rear? 232 horsepower. <laughs> yes, that's, that's a lot. Now we move to the front <laughs> and maybe let's open up the engine compartment. While we do it, just quick some of the cool design features, the door handle sunken in. I love it. Mirror, absolutely loving it. When I was driving it, it's mirror, it's frameless. So it gives it this extra design feel, aesthetic look. I'm also going to open up the trunk while we're there. So here, let it go. Yes, there we go, because there is also something else hidden and of course also the engine compartment. Now, interior 
classic, modern, minimalistic, functional, most importantly. Then what I like also here, small detail, look at that, white seats and the back is actually black because it is, although it is a four seater, we managed to go with four people on a lap one day. It's, uh, it's doable, let's call it that way. But because you kind, you kind of want to put accent on the fact that it's a two seater, the front seats are in different color than the rear seats and I like it. Now, the front powertrain, which doesn't make sense. Because why? First of all, what is this? This is a two liter mm -hmm. combustion engine. Four cylinders. Four cylinders, turbo, supercharged. So turbocharged and supercharged. Yes. And as if that is not enough, the alternator. Yes. Works as a power source as well. As well. 68 horsepower, I believe. Exactly. 50 kilowatts, 68. Uh, 50 yeah. kilowatts. Yeah, 50 kilowatts yeah. and 68 horsepower. Yeah. Uh, and the uh, engine here yeah. has 333 horsepower. Yeah. Now, all this power together combined with the electric motors in the rear and the alternator and the engine itself, you get 600 horsepower? Yeah, and 1,000 Newton meter. Yeah, which is and also... You have noticed at the track. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and then I'm going to use this amazing flashlight here to show you also a couple of features that, I, that make myself wonder why, on top of all the technological advancements, why carbon fiber airbox? <laughs> <laughs> Looks good, works. <laughs> Well, and <laughs> yeah. yeah, but it's, it's something that you open it up and it's actually, yeah, quite a bragging, uh, yeah, point you can actually show off to your friends. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> and it works. And it's yeah, lightweight. It works. Yeah. It's lightweight. Um, uh, then probably also one of the most important components of the car, in suspension. Yes. Fully adjustable. Yeah. And here you just adjust it. Make it stiffer, you move that direction. Mm -hmm. Make it softer, you move in that direction. Easy as that. And of course, we have made a special setting for you yeah. and your driving style. So today we draw three, click in the front and four in the rear. Mm -hmm. to get the Misha balance <laughs> <laughs> the car. <laughs> when I was having the blue car, we spent lots of time like actually fine tuning the suspension settings and Joachim was always uh, emailing me like, hey, try this, try that and this and that. And then w we got the one which was like really amazing. Like in the beginning, like the, the, the street setting, you can already go out on the track, but that made the car so sharp. And then also different alignment settings. It was just something like it transformed the car completely. It, will, it made a turn like like a lightweight supercar, which this is by all means not lightweight at all, but it, for some reason, it works. So I'm not the one who's going to be complaining about it because if it works, then why should you complain about some numbers and statistics? The bullet is also carbon fiber. Start from here and yeah. all, the, all the way around. Yeah, full carbon. Mm. Um, yeah, I guess that's it when it comes to the engine and uh, all the technical specs. Um, we opened up the trunk for a reason because there is also something. Uh, I need my flashlight again because yeah. that's why it, it is already dark as you can see. It's like welcome to Apex After Dark. Night at the museum, but then night at. There we go. So, why is the question? Because it's beautiful and it's electric. I mean, it's 2020 now. 2021 so already. Yeah, already. <laughs> <laughs> so why not show this? And mm -hmm. It is again, I, I have to say, it's also poor. it actually works in terms of showing off. Every time I would open up the trunk to put something in there, people are like, oh my God, what is this? So it is actually very cool to, when you have such a car for such a price, you actually do want to kind of like, yeah, show off with it. And uh, this car does it very well. Yeah, but that's in a typical a way. Star, where yeah. the, the design and the poster, they have attention to all these small details mm -hmm. like this or like here, carbon fiber. It's beautiful. Yeah. It just gives the car a character. Yeah. And the, yeah, when you close the trunk, then you have also the retractable wing over here. Um, I guess let's, let's lift it up to look at some other important components. Oh yeah. Like this, for example. Yep. This brakes. Yeah. I mean, at the track. What do you say about it? Um, again, <laughs> I have to mention the weight, 2,350 kilos, 
but these brakes make them stop and stop and stop and stop. We, and although you, you uh, when you went to Adenau down there, yeah, and we were pushing, I thought, oh shit, now we will uh, hit the barrier. Uh, but you just yeah. <laughs> brake, and I was impressed how it yeah, works, yeah. I must say, <laughs> or your driving style. <laughs> yeah, no, I have already some fine tuning and dialing in with the car, so I know what it can do yeah. and what it uh, cannot do. Um, I haven't had any cannot do moments, but uh, you, you know, you know the world within the limits. But yeah, no, the brakes work very well in this car. Also, the brake pedal feel is therefore also close to a race car or similar to a race car because this is actually a monoblock caliper, yeah. right? Yeah, six-piston so monoblock. Six-piston monoblock because usually the calipers, again, just to explain it to you briefly, are made from two parts. So you have pistons on this side, pistons on the other side, and thereby they squeeze the brake disc. And to make it cheaper and easier to make, the, the caliper is made from two parts. Here you have it made from one part, therefore there is no flex between the piston, uh, between the caliper when you squeeze it in. It just stays in one position and the brake pedal feel does not change due to, um, due to the, this movement of the caliper because it's non-existent. Of course you can have brake fading, which again I did not experience with this car. So it, it works. It not, it's not just a GT. That you can uh, that you can brag about that you have 500 plus horsepower, but when you start driving sporty with it, you have smoky brakes, you have this that. It is actually one of the few cars that works as a whole, which is which makes it more impressive than just numbers on papers that you get to see at a dealership or at the auto show or or or. Now from here on, we can also see the Erling suspension, the adjustable system. Uh, why didn't you go for just? the yeah the active suspension what you would find on the yeah the other yeah, GT marks. Uh, we have been working with the leans for many years mm -hmm. and of course we test different kind of shock absorbers but uh, for this kind of car this is the best one we can find mm -hmm. on simple. the market yeah it's simple if it works, and it works. we have spent a lot of time together with the leans i think it's these front dampers, my mechanic I have taken out, mm -hmm. open the damper, and mm -hmm. the leans have changed one disc or a piston or something. I think we did it around 60 times or 70 times mm. at the front. Wow. And then in rear we changed even a little bit more, just to get the perfect balance in the car. Mm -hmm. And we changed springs and bushings and anti-roll about to make. Mm -hmm create the feeling, the pool star yep. DNA. And it works, simple as that, because it's, it's again, the, the... It should be easy and fun yeah. to drive. Yeah, that's, 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 that's the it, thing. There's one thing that, well, well for, speaking of details, so we have here also metal golden, uh, the valve caps, which is attention to detail. Yeah. Very nice attention to detail, I like it. But then, unlike Polestar 2, this one does not have a tow hook. Yeah, we are missing the tow hook here, that's true. Yeah. But, uh, but hey, no, no, no single car in the world is perfect. Huh? No. <laughs> we have to think about that. <laughs> right, let's put it a bit more up and look more at the powertrain from the bottom because, again, you can see here clearly that the caliper is monoblock. Suspension components, just briefly, double wishbone suspension on the front. Um, anything else fancy to add that I'm missing? No, I think you... Uh, yeah, just uh, in brief, brief the, yeah. the, the bottom is pretty much flat. Um, yeah, central exhaust. And then, of course, we come to the most interesting part, the electric motors. Two, Two electric, electric motors. motors. So one here and one here. And as mentioned, the car can drive fully electric with rear wheel drive. It can drive only with the internal combustion engine, of course, on the front. It can drive all wheel drive and then you have also the power mode which just gives you the full power uh, maximum attack mode and i do want to say that the electric motors do work this is something that i addressed already in the beginning of the video and to demonstrate the difference that when it doesn't well how, how it works is when you run out of battery and with this car you can do roughly two and a half laps on the full charge uh, that you have the, the, the batteries help or the, the rear motors can help you on the lap. You can do a lot more with internal combustion engine because the total output, the, um, the, the range is roughly to 700 kilometers, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So obviously on track it's significantly less 
because uh, on street driving you can do 125 fully electric and on the track I don't know how much you can do full electric but what I'm telling you at maximum attack two and a half laps you have assistance but once the battery runs out you start feeling that you're really missing those electric engines, not only or electric motors, not only the extra torque that uh, benefit that you have the total output of thousand newton meters, but also the torque vectoring. The car becomes understeery because you only have the front wheel drive, and more importantly, you don't have the actual torque vectoring support. So this showcases how the, the technology is actually works and how great it is. Is there anything you would like to add? No. no. Oh well. It's nice to see when you draw the car at the track. <laughs> That's um, really cool. Yeah. How you handle the car. Yeah. No, yeah. thank you for being a great passenger, just also to, <laughs> to enjoy, to talk about it, how yeah, it works. But, uh, to always push me beyond my <laughs> limits, um, which is not always a good thing, but uh, <laughs> need to be reminded that, uh, yeah, you, can, you need to have fun in life. And with this car, you can have lots of fun. You can be seen. And, but unfortunately, I think they're all sold out, right, by now? Sorry? The cars are sold out by now. It's, you have final uh, No, edition. still you can uh, it's the order last, cars, last yeah. Year. yeah. It's the last year. Yeah, I this think. is the last year. Yeah. So you have to hurry up. If you, yeah, if you want to hurry up, you will have definitely something unique, as mentioned. With this car, you will stand out. And it's, it's not a one-trick pony. You can uh, do groceries with it. You can pick up your dog with it. You can pick up your kids with it. You have also special child seats in the rear. Um, you can do lots of things with it. And you can also have fun on the track in a responsible manner without uh, fearing that your brakes will overheat or you will end up in a barrier because of the brake fading or, or, or. Of course, keep in mind of the tire pressures. You need to monitor those like on any other car. But everything else is, uh, is suited. And this means that also if it works on the track, it, it will work and work and work on the road and you will just enjoy it. And I must say, Polestar 1, this is the car that I miss the most from having, like, having had. And you know that after having had Polestar 1, I switched to another car, which was more expensive, more pricey, more, more maybe faster on paper to, to 300 kilometers per hour, but it didn't feel as luxurious and comfortable. And also because of the hybrid system, it didn't feel that good. Hello, Pancake, come here. Would you like to say something about your first ever car? Does it make you happy seeing it again? Yes. Yes, you will never forget your first ever lap with a Polestar 1, and definitely I want. So for which, this makes it extra special for me. As always, starting talk a bit nonsense, so I think it's time to say goodbye, and also more importantly, thank you to Joachim for bringing the car, yeah, and bringing the knowledge, and most importantly, putting your knowledge into this car. Yeah, it's a pleasure to be here. Yeah, and, and thank you for a lap. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, and looking forward to also seeing more of that continuing in the future products of Polestar, right? You want, sh should our next car be a Polestar? What do you mean? We still have the Polestar. No, we don't. 